Hey guys, welcome to another episode. This is my 2020 Ram Promaster City Van. In fact, this is my second Ram Promaster City Van because in 2021, I purchased my first one and converted it into a camper van. I had the van for about a year and then I sold the van along with the conversion kit. And ever since then, I really, really missed the van, so therefore I bought another one. One of the major deciding factors for purchasing another Ram Promaster City Van was the MPG. Ram is advertising the MPG as 21 for the city and 28 for the highway. However, you have to take that into consideration because not only do they have a tradesman version, which is this one right here, and then they also have a wagon version, which has seats in the back, and it's a little bit more furnished than this with airbags and everything else. So that adds on top of the weight. However, if you want my take on it, as an owner, I can tell you that it does way more than 28 miles per gallon. Realistically speaking, as an empty cargo van with nothing else inside and me being the driver, I can get anywhere between 31 to 32 miles per gallon on the highway. City fluctuates because you're on and off the gas, stopping at red lights, stop signs, etc. It's just really hard to tell. But most of the time when, I, when I'm on the highway, I'm pretty much a lazy driver, so I put it in cruise control mode. And if I'm looking at the trip indicator, I see that it's hovering anywhere between 30 to 32 miles per gallon, which is phenomenal in my opinion. However, as a camper van, I've also tested out the MPG, and I can safely say that as a camper van with everything loaded inside, which I'm assuming is probably an additional 800 to 1,000 pounds, it still has the great 30 to 32 mile per gallon in the highway. Now let's talk about the cargo space because this is why you bought this van. As far as cargo space is concerned, this van has 131 cubic feet of cargo space. Because if you're searching for a micro van, you currently have a couple of different choices. You have the Ram Promaster City, the Ford Transit provides 127 cubic feet of space, and then the smallest one, the NV200 provides 102 cubic feet of space. And in my opinion, if you're going to be converting that into a camper van, it's going to be a very, very small space compared to what you have here. Uh, as you can see, for a camper van, there's a lot of room in here. Or if you're going to be hauling stuff, there's still a lot of room in here. Because if you were to convert it into a camper van, which is what I plan to do, you could put a big enough bed in here that will fit someone who's six foot four tall. And depending on the type of couch or bed that you have in here, you can fit something that will fit a very tall person when they're sitting down as well. And this is primarily the reason why I like the Cascade Camper build because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it utilizes the space really, really well. On my left side here, you have the cabinet, which holds the refrigerator as well as the water. And then you also have the power supply all built into the left side here. And then on my right side, you have the couch slash bed. And then on the floor, you have the wood panels. So in total, there are three pieces that make up the Cascade Camper build. However, for the second build, I haven't really decided on what I want to do, so you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. Besides that, these two doors have two positions. The position you're looking at is number one, and then this is the second position. It opens up all the way, giving you a whole lot more space to load stuff inside the van if you need to. Or if it's really sunny or windy, I'll close the doors, and this makes it a whole lot better. And the other cool thing is that you have two small compartments here for storage. Speaking of storage, there's a lot of room inside the van. In the front of the van, tons of space for your gadgets, for your items, or your snacks if you're taking long trips. Lots of room underneath here for the driver's side as well as the passenger side. And then towards the front, you have a section here for your drinks. Now, if we take a look at the dash, you also get space here, which can hold your phone, your sunglasses, your keys, and whatnot. I would definitely put something underneath here, so this way, when you're driving, things are not sliding around. Um, since I just recently bought this van, I haven't had a chance to do any of that stuff, but it's coming up. I'm definitely going to be doing it. As far as the glove compartment, it's nice and big. Lots of room for a lot of different things. And you can also lock it up with your key. And then if we look at the center console, you have space for your coins. And then you have two drinks holders, one in the front and also one in the rear, which is very convenient. And then last but not least, Underneath here, there's a lot of space. You can put a lot of stuff underneath here, and it's pretty much an empty space on this side as well as on that side. And of course, let's not forget, underneath the seat, you got a lot of space as well. Now, moving over to the sliding doors. As you can see on the sliding door, plenty of room for a drinks bottle or anything you want to stuff inside there. And you have the same amount of space on the other side as well. And I almost forgot, you get tons of space up here for your jackets, for winter coats, for sweaters. And it also includes a nice little net so this way things don't fall out. So when it comes to space, there's plenty of it, nothing to worry about. When I bought this the first time in 2021, 
I was a little skeptical and a little worried that I wouldn't have a lot of space in here, but I actually traveled in it for an entire eight months with my dog. And between the two of us, we didn't run out of space. In fact, we were super comfortable. But now let's talk about build quality and how well it drives. As far as the interior fit and finish, this is not exactly something you would call a luxury vehicle. However, for a cargo van, the quality is still pretty good. Luckily for me, this 2020 model comes with a leather wrapped steering wheel as an option. And I'm really glad that whoever priced this out in the beginning chose to get it with this because the leather wrap definitely gives it a premium feel and look. And when you're driving it, it feels really good. Besides that, the infotainment is unacceptable in 2023. It's very outdated. And the only thing I primarily use this for is as a backup camera. However, I do have a solution where I'm going to add CarPlay to this. I'm going to be keeping the head unit stock, but I will add a separate CarPlay that's going to live somewhere here or maybe on the on the left side here. I haven't really decided on that yet, but as soon as I have more information about that, I'll definitely create a video and make a review out of it. So this way, if you guys are interested, you can replicate what I've done. Aside from that, when you're looking out and driving, the interior cabin space is absolutely spacious. The windscreen looks absolutely huge visibility is abundant it's nothing you have to worry about the left and right side mirrors are very easy to see out of the bottom portion of the mirror makes everything look a lot bigger and it gives you a wider field of view but overall visibility is really really nice in this van as far as the seats are concerned the seats are very very comfortable the longest trip i've done is going to san francisco and back in fact, I think I did 1,400 miles and it was a very, very comfortable drive. The good news is that the seats provide lumbar support and it can be raised up and down and you can move it forward and backward. Other things that I like is that it has a single USB-A adapter on the bottom here and then right next to it, it's got an auxiliary input. So whenever I hook up my Apple Play module, it's gonna go directly into the auxiliary port and then the sound's gonna come out of the speakers, which should make things very, very convenient. Now I wanna focus the attention on reliability, the big elephant in the room. I know a lot of you guys that are purchasing this vehicle are kind of worried about the same things that I'm worried about, and that is the oil consumption issue. Before buying this van, I was very nervous about buying pre-owned, but as you know, the market is very, very expensive at the moment. So to get a brand new one, it costs anywhere between 33 to $35,000. And then when you factor in tax and finance and all that other stuff, because finance rates are over the roof right now, you're talking about a vehicle close to $40,000 for something that a couple of years ago can be easily had for about 25, 27,000. So this is the reason why I bought pre-owned, but with pre-owned also comes a lot of anxieties. Fortunately for me, this is a 2020 model and there's two years of powertrain warranty left. So with the powertrain warranty, it covers the transmission as well as the engine. So if I do have any oil consumption issues between now and two years, I could always bring it in and hopefully it'll get fixed. Besides that, this vehicle also has three months remaining of the factory bumper to bumper warranty. So that also alleviates a couple of my anxieties because between now and then, I'm gonna put as many miles as I can on the vehicle. Hopefully nothing happens, but if it does, between now and three months, it's definitely going into a Ram dealership, ASAP. If you're in the market for a brand new Ram Promaster City van, you're already gonna get three years of bumper to bumper warranty and five years of powertrain. So you have absolutely nothing to worry about. However, if you're like me and you're gonna buy pre-owned because at this moment, it's really difficult to get a brand new one, but you may be able to find one out there. I would highly recommend that you get something that still has powertrain warranty available or something that has bumper to bumper warranty left like mine. Three months is a pretty good enough time to find out if the van needs any kind of service. Hopefully nothing goes wrong, but if it does, at least I have three months. And worst case scenario, two years left of the powertrain. So that's what I recommend for you as well. Otherwise, I've seen tons of these vans go anywhere between 150 to 170,000 miles, maybe even more than that. But anyway, the internet is littered with negative news. So if you go looking for it, you'll definitely find it. Maybe I'll never have issues with it. Maybe I will in a couple months. You never know. But regardless, if I do or I don't, I'll definitely make a review video and I'll let you guys know how the vehicle is performing. And until that time, please make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Ciao for now.